What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Real Chemistry, where we're going to talk about cyclic compounds. That means compounds that make ring structures, and we're going to learn how to name cycloalkanes. That is a compound with no double bonds, so cycloalkanes. Cycloalkenes are a ring structure that have at least one double bond, and cycloalkynes are a ring structure that has a triple bond. Okay, so we're going to learn to name all of those. One of the biggest difference here is that we're going to put cyclo in front of our names to indicate that we have a ring structure. Before we dive into some examples, let's remind ourselves of the rules we have for naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Lots of rules there, so if you're not familiar with these, check out the lesson on alkanes and alkenes and alkynes first, and then come back here. You may want to pause the video to remind yourself of those rules. All right, let's jump into our first example. A cycloalkane with a substituent, okay? How do we name this? Well, first we're gonna start off by counting our carbons so that we get the right base name. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It makes a hexagon and it's gonna have six carbons. So we're just gonna write hexane. That is in fact the base name when you have six carbons. Now, step two is we're just gonna add cyclo at the front. Because it's a ring, we need to use the word cyclo to tell people, hey, we got a ring here. And now we wanna add the name of our substituent. Here's where something interesting comes up with ring structures. Let's say instead of the fluorine being there, we put it here. Is that a different molecule? Well, no, it's not. All I've really done is rotate it a little bit. So imagine that molecule sitting in front of you in space, and if you just rotate it, it can put the fluorine at any one of these corners, here, 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 here. And so it doesn't actually matter where you put the fluorine, you're making the same exact molecule. And that means we don't need a number. So we have cyclohexane, and we just tack fluoro in front of it. So the full name is just going to be fluoro, and then our cyclohexane. So notice, no number needed, because no matter where I put that single substituent, it's going to have the same exact structure as a molecule. This is only true for single substituents. If we have multiple substituents, then we do in fact need to number them. So let's look at an example like that. Okay, here we have another cyclohexane with one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So once again, we're still gonna start off with cyclohexane. Our substituents though, give us some interesting features for naming this guy. We wanna give both the substituents the lowest possible number we can give them, okay? So when I have a ring structure, I can put one wherever I want. There, 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 there. I can start counting wherever I want. Now, I obviously wanna give one of my substituents one. So I wanna put it either on the bromine or the fluorine. So that way, one of them gives the lowest possible substituent numbering. Uh, so which one do I wanna give one to? Well, here we use the alphabet to break the tie. So I could give either of them one, but bromine comes first. So we're gonna give bromine the one and we're gonna give fluorine a different number. But we're not done thinking through this numbering because I have a couple options here. I could number them counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or I could number them clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Well, which numbering do I want to use? In one case, you'll notice that what I would get is I would have fluorine at five and bromine at one. So if I use the yellow numbering, I'd have one and five. If I use the red numbering, I get one and three. So clearly the red numbering there gives me lower numbers and that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to get rid of this yellow numbering. It's wrong. Get out of here, yellow numbering. We don't like you. We're going to use the red numbering. It's right. So that means we're going to need to tack on one bromo and we're going to need to tack on three fluoro. Which one comes first? Well, bromine again comes first in the alphabet, so that's the one that's going to lead off our name. So we'll put three fluoro directly in front of the cyclohexane, and then we'll put one bromo way up front. So this molecule becomes one bromo, three fluoro, cyclohexane. So notice, as soon as we have multiple substituents, we do in fact need to give them numbers. One substituent, you're good, no number needed. Two substituents or more, you need the numbers. Okay, let's go into example three. Now we have ourselves a cycloalkene. So it's got a double bond. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by writing the base name of the hydrocarbon. It's a square with four sides and four corners. And so it has four carbons. And so that means we're dealing with a butane. Two changes we need to do right off the bat. We need to change the ending to make that a double bond. So ain becomes ene. So that becomes butene. That part's great. And then we need to add the word cyclo up front. 
cyclo. So that's cyclobutene. Cool. Now, here's the thing. Just like with my single substituents or a single bond, I don't need to add any numbering because if I move this double bond from here to here, again, that's just a rotation of the molecule. It's not a new molecule. So cyclobutene is a completely sufficient name. So because there's just one double bond, I just name it cyclobutene. Once again, just like with multiple substituents, if we added another double bond, we'd have to put some numbers on there. Okay, so that's just cyclobutene. When you have a single double bond or just one triple bond, you don't need to put the number for the position where it's at. Let's go to example four. All right, now we have a cycloalkyne with a substituent. Once again, we want to write the base name of the hydrocarbon by counting the carbons. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that would make that a heptane. So we would have heptane. And we want to go ahead and change the ending. Because it's a triple bond, we got heptine. And because it's a cyclic compound, we want to put cyclo up front. So we got cycloheptine. Awesome. Now we want to number the carbons to give the substituents the lowest possible number. We obviously want to prioritize the double or triple bond, just like we would when we were naming an alkyne or an alkene. And so we have the option of starting here with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or we could put the 1 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so notice 1 and 2 have to go with that triple bond either way. I can't, for example, put 1 and 7 on the triple bond because the triple bond needs both those lowest carbons. And in this case, we actually tie with both numberings. The 5 on the fluorine is going to be there either way, and the 1 and the 2 is going to be on the triple bond either way. So that means either numbering system is the exact same. And we just want to tell people where that fluoro is, which is at the fifth carbon. So we're just going to tack onto the front five fluoro. Notice we don't need to put a number for where that triple bond is. So we have five fluoro, cyclo, heptine. All right, one more example. We're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to start with the name and write the formula. This one is 5-methyl cyclopentene. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to write the base carbon chain as a ring. Now, because it's pentene, it's going to make a pentagram, okay? So we're just going to start off with drawing five carbons as a pentagram. Boom. That is a pentagram. It's, it's not like the best one I've ever drawn, but it's okay. So we got ourselves cyclopentane. Now, we need to add a, triple, a, a double bond because it ends with the ene. We know it has a double bond. Add the double bond wherever you want. I'm going to add it here doesn't matter where you add the double bond, but once you put the double bond, then you need to think about the numbering to make sure you get this methyl group on the third one. Again, whenever we're going from the name to the formula, we can put the numbers wherever we want. So if I want to call this 1, 2, that's totally fine. If I want to go the opposite direction, 1, 2, that's also totally fine. So I'm just going to choose one of these. I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I know methyl needs to go on the third carbon. Now notice if I chose the other numbering, it would look a little different. But if I rotate it, it would be the exact same. Okay, so that is going to be 3-methyl cyclopentane. Remember that methyl is just a carbon. So if we're adding a methyl group, we just add a stick. Ooh, don't want to erase the molecule. That uh, tells us, hey, guess what? We got a single extra carbon here that's part of the methyl substituent. And here's just a summary of the rules we've learned. Cycloalkanes, we change these by adding cyclo at the front of their base name. Single substituent cycloalkanes don't need a number. And then remember, for cycloalkenes and alkynes, we still add that word cyclo. Uh, but we don't indicate the position of a double or a triple bond. We know it's at carbon 1 and 2. So if we have a, just one of these, we don't need to put the number. We do indicate the position of any substituents. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.